this demonstration, I'm going to be showing how the Kapow Catalyst platform can be used to mobile enable an existing website with existing web application functionality. Now typically to perform this kind of demonstration or, or ultimately to perform a complete solution, it requires a lot of coding to either service enable an existing web application or website, in other words to write web services around certain functionality on the site so that you can then go to the mobile device, or it requires a lot of coding to essentially rewrite all of that functionality for the different mobile devices. Either way it's a lot of time and a lot of money. Often this requires a freeze on the existing web application or a freeze to the existing functionality. And that can also really set back an organization if they need to make changes to that functionality. Now the Kapow mobile enablement solution requires no such freeze on the existing desktop web application. Also, the solution allows you to leverage what's there. Leverage functionality that already exists, including any sort of security logins that one might need to do on the desktop application and therefore also on the mobile device. You can leverage all of that existing functionality. With no coding, you can essentially service enable web functionality and entire websites. And because you can service enable it with no coding, there doesn't need to be APIs that already exist. So no APIs are necessary. Getting to the demonstration, this demonstration really requires a web application to mobile enable. So what I chose is Kapow's internal intranet run on an open source uh, wiki called Confluence. So Confluence has the kind of typical trappings that one would expect from a web application. To get into the system, one needs to have a username and password. I could log out here and re-log back in uh, as me. Uh, but to get into the system, it needs a username and password. And then there's content. And what I've done in the demonstration is really created um, bits of content or pages that I'm going to now mobile enable. What I've really done, though, is I've service enabled using Kapow's Catalyst most any page in this Confluence application. So what does a page have on it? It has, at its most basic level, a title, some content, when it was last modified, an author, and then there's a lot of other stuff and a lot of other functionality around a page. But for the purpose of this demonstration, I want to show how one can mobile enable the display of a page and also the basic editing of fields on a page. But really the sky's the limit. One could mobile enable any bit of functionality that you see here and, and that you're able to perform in a desktop browser on this application. So we're running this application right now in a desktop browser and our goal is to take this functionality, you know, displaying pages, editing pages, and put that on a mobile device and put that on independently on mobile devices so that it runs on platforms like iOS, Android, Blackberry, Windows Phone, etc. So that's what we're going to do in the demonstration. To service enable functionality within Confluence, I used a part of the Kapow Catalyst platform we call Design Studio to create automated processes that in Kapow terms we talk about as robots. Robots are essentially these steps in this flowchart that you're, you're looking at where my mouse is moving here at, at the top. And as a robot developer, I create and edit steps in this flowchart. Essentially, it's just like navigating the web. You can see there's a browser view here, except that as I execute my steps, for example, down here to log in to Confluence, as I'm executing them, as I'm stepping through the robot, as you can see, I'm moving through the flowchart. Literally in real time, it's going out to the web and, and doing the sort of activities that it needs to do, like navigate to a page generically to extract things like the, the page title um, and, the, and the content. It's really much more robust than this. There's a lot of other things that you can do within this integration browser here. Read and consume JSON, XML, uh, and that implies the the consumption of web services, REST and SOAP based web services. Um, you can read from Excel documents, PDFs, flat files like comma delimited files. You, there's really a lot of databases. I mean, there's really a lot of things that you can consume and interact with in the integration browser. The web is just one of those things. And again, web applications and websites that are heavy in AJAX and JavaScript can all be handled uh, with this platform. So, in this particular demonstration, I created three different robots which then with one click of a button I can publish out to a, the cloud. I, I did it to EC2 in this case and also to my local machine. You can publish these with one button and then these robots can essentially be run as functions in Java, functions in .NET, or as REST services themselves. So this is how you can service enable functionality on a site like Confluence. I created three such robots or three such services in this demonstration. A robot, this, this robot that you're looking at right now will generically fetch a page out on Confluence and get the different pieces off of it like the title and the content and the author and the, the last modified date and things like that. 
there's a robot that I that I created that will um, do a login and then store that login session into a database. I, I wanted to demonstrate a little bit about how a robot like this that, that you were just looking at that can fetch a page generically can also grab a session if one's available from a previous login by that user. In that way, uh, you can save time. And the, the robot saves a lot of time as it can restore that old session. And if it hasn't expired yet, then it, it can make use of it. Else it'll go and, and log in again. So there's a robot dedicated to logging in, the one you're looking at right now dedicated to fetching a page. And then a third one that I wrote real quick that, that is, is all about editing a page or writing to Confluence. But really, you can service enable any functionality on there. Um, as somebody who's trained in Kapow, who's uh, worked here for a while, I developed these robots in, in a matter of 10 or 15 minutes. You can make use of the fact that these steps are shared in, in two of the robots that I've written, and we have the ability to share steps between robots. We call these robot snippets. So that makes my life easier, um, not having to redo or recopy steps that I've already created in one robot that are going to be needed in another. So I mentioned that when I was done with this robot, what I did, one of the things that I did is hit this button up here where I uploaded the robot to a server that I'd provisioned, part of the Kapow platform called the Management Console. And I provisioned a server out on EC2 where I'm running Kapow's Management Console. So I can upload the robot out there. And then switching my browser to the web application that's running out there on EC2, the Kapow Catalyst Management Console. My robot, you can see it's, it's in here, down here. My robot has been published. You can see now that I have sample code where I can execute the robot, as I said before, in Java or in .NET and C Sharp. Or I can uh, call the Kapow as a REST service. So I, I essentially, automatically, by pressing that button, I now have an endpoint that I can use to call this service generically or this robot generically that's going to take some inputs, like the page I want to go to, my Confluence username and password, you know, if, if I want to manage that in my client application, I can do that and pass it to the robot, or I can manage that on the, on the robot side, on the server side. But I now have this endpoint with one click, or this service with one click that I can call for mobile devices to really execute and make use of functionality that in this case was on the Conflu in the Confluence web application to begin with. I didn't have to rewrite that functionality. I just quickly service enable it with Kapow and then make that available to the mobile devices. So with these web services quickly created with Kapow Catalyst, with Design Studio, and then published here to the management console, you know, what can we do with those things? You know, we can use frameworks. There's a ton of mobile frameworks out there like jQuery Mobile, that's what I used in this case, where we can make use of these services. So I have running on my machine right now an, an Android emulator. Uh, it looks like an old Android phone, where now I've, I have a GUI that can make use of those services that I provided. So I, I again, as I mentioned before, I have a, a web service that I wrote uh, in 10 or 15 minutes using Design Studio, where now I can edit this page out in Confluence. So you can see there's a page title here um, called the, you know, the, it's called the second mobile enablement page. Well, if I look on Confluence in the desktop, there's that page rendered on, on the desktop that I've mobile enabled over here and made available to edit on a mobile device. Or if I change to a uh, BlackBerry emulator, for those of you still using Blackberries, I created a bookmark to my, my login page here. And I can um, select the login field here um, using my emulator and log in using my username and password. So again, I, it took me about 10 or 15 minutes to create the robot that's going to do the login and then store that session into a database so I can do a little bit of session management. Given that that service has been created, really getting it to go on the BlackBerry becomes a breeze, creating a service that it's going to now allow me to log in to Confluence on the mobile device really is uh, quick. So you can see that I logged in using my BlackBerry device and now I'm on one of the pages that I'm displaying by default from Confluence. And you can see the author is displayed there in the last modified date and then the page content. And then I can edit that and submit a change on my BlackBerry device. Finally, in my hand here, I have an iPhone 4 where what I've mobile enabled is also rendering. I attempted to show it in, a, in the web camera here, but it, the text shows backwards and it's a little blurry. So I'll take screenshots and include it in the video now. The point is that with the Kapow Catalyst platform, I can mobile enable an application like Confluence 
any sort of application running in a browser behind the firewall, outside of the firewall, on a partner extranet. I could service enable that quickly with Kapow Catalyst using Design Studio, create these robots or these automated processes, publish them with one click as web services or as function calls in Java or .NET, and then mobile enabling it is essentially a breeze after that because mobile platform or mobile UI platform can be used that can consume these web services to display it on devices like iOS, Android, BlackBerry, Windows Phone, etc. in a platform independent way. The difficult part is the service enabling of the existing functionality. Kapow helps you solve that difficult part, enabling you to create these services very quickly.